Okay, this Hangout is now on air, live, Lady Ada. What okay. is this? Okay, welcome to a uh, Ask Engineer show and tell <laughs> pre, pre party yeah. party. Uh, we're going to be uh, singing by Molly. And uh, we're going to be uh, <laughs> we're going to be showing and telling for uh, I don't know for asking Just so far, it's just known Pedro and uh, Phil B. So it's all Team Adafruit, which is cool because you guys don't usually get as much time to show off your stuff. So we'll uh, we'll show off your stuff, and then uh, maybe if other people come in, we'll uh, have them show their stuff. Yeah. Also, we can do a Adafruit staff meeting. Yeah. Um, which we might do. So. <laughs> okay, so everybody, like, I want you to, um, you have to register your dragons. I know we sent you all dragons last week, but we used did serial you, numbers. Did you get the TPS report? To yeah. fill out? Um, so let's uh, let's start with Noah and Pedro. Noah and Pedro? Hey, guys. What you hey, got guys. cooking this week? All right, so it seems like the going trend in 3D printing is all companies printing their little mascots and little, you know, bringing them all to life. So we said, oh, okay, let's bring Adabot to life. So this week, we got a cute little Adabot. Yay, Adabot. Yeah. So he prints with uh, the legs attached. Oh, yeah, you got a little copy there. Yeah. Yeah, so the bottom portion uh, prints with supports. The the, um, the legs are uh, already attached on there. The arms snap on, and there are two lids for the body, so you can fill it with all sorts of electronic goodies. Yeah. The um, eyes, mouthpieces, and little articulating ears here. And... One of the cool little things about the mouthpiece is trying to stay true to the puppet version. When you put some LEDs in it, the thickness is a little bit different, so the mouth glows while the eyes do not. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Fancy. Yeah, so it's uh, really cool for doing little poses. You can do uh, put a little piece of uh, tack on there. You can do cool little, you know, a cool little stop, uh, animation, uh, stop motion animation with them. So not, not a little fun you can have with a little eight about. I like how the ears rotate too, which I thought was a cute. Yeah. Little yeah. So beep, beep, I have some beep, questions beep. for you for the folks out there who love to do 3D printing, or like most people, they're probably like, one day I'm going to get into 3D printing. So, <laughs> if how long did this take you to to do in um, uh, and what tool did you use? All right, so for this one, we're using Maya simply because of just the way that the arms are constructed, and um, there's a I'll, have a, a better explanation uh, tomorrow for some of the things that we're working on. You'll, you'll see okay. exactly how everything was built with a couple of boxes and some uh, deformers inside of Maya. So this took about a little bit of over a week simply because like just printing everything from scratch takes about eight hours. Yeah. So there's that aspect, just you know the amount of time that it takes and then um, getting all the tolerances right for snack fitting all the pieces that go together and um, there's always support removal, you know, the, the post-process after printing. So that's uh, that's what takes a large chunk of time. If you notice, uh, I think this week we turned it in, you know, a couple days later than we usually do simply because, you know, of how long it took to just print and put it all together. Yeah. yeah. And because we got a couple more people, I'm going to uh, move on. I, I just want to know about, like, your thought process with this. Do you guys draw, do you sketch it out, or do you just kind of live play with pixels? Yeah, so usually we do sketch it out, but for this one, um, big shout outs to our uh, uh, creative, yeah, yeah, our creative director here, Bruce Yan. Um, we had uh, the reference drawings were provided, so I was able to do all the extrudes and revolves for all the shapes. Oh, so you used the Illustrator files and did extrudes from those? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's uh, just a couple of, um, and you'll see tomorrow. Just um, there, there's some some post uh, setting up that you have to do to make sure the paths are um, just the way they're compounded. Is uh, you know, just checked. Okay, and, this yeah, is fantastic. I like that we're getting into action figures now, Data Fruit. I know. And then the last well, thing. Well, that kid robot store closed, but like in New York, it, the kid, just before we had something that yeah, they could sell. Yeah, in New York, the kid robot store closed, so we have to you know, show the world how to make their own kid robots. Uh, okay. And and what's the the project you're starting to work on there with a quadcopter? So for next week, we got some LEDs on the iris here. Yay! LED drone lighting system. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually where we, we actually wanted to film outside while we're you know driving the drone, but it's all thunderstorm in here, so probably not a good idea. Yeah, I could find it. Okay, right, well thanks week. so much, guys, and everyone watching. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna have the Adabot video. Um, Lady Ada and I saw it this morning. It was magical and fantastic. It was so cute you wanted to throw up rainbows. Yes. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> throw up the rainbow. Okay. okay. Next up, we're gonna go to Phil B and then Tony and then Noah. Phil, what you got? 
Hey there. I, I like how Pedro and Noah, even their lighting is magnificent. Yeah. I'm here in this dark, smelly cave. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yes, uh, behind me here, uh, something, I, I was just playing around with this the weekend before Maker Fair. Um, I was playing with the uh, Fade Candy board uh, for driving NeoPixels in obscene numbers, and um, I was just trying out this idea with um, lighting a jacket. Um, so there's there's Tron light cycles uh, currently showing on the jacket. 480 NeoPixels, one Fade Candy board, and just a big-ass LiPo uh, battery. Um, I ended up not finishing it, not because it doesn't work or anything, but um, there was kind of no challenge in it. Um, you know, the Fade Candy and the NeoPixels just made it so um, so simple. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I like that you video... Hated it. I like that video jacks, jackets are now too simple. That's so cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, Did you yeah, use like a cool. laptop, or what was running the Fade Candy's Raspberry uh, Pi? At the moment, it's hooked into my iMac, but my plan was to use the uh, Raspberry Pi, because they do have the... Um, the Fade Candy driver, they have a Pi version of it. Okay. Um, so my plan was just to read a, a little um, MPEG file or something. Should have no problem. Okay. Uh, but it, it would all fit in the pockets of the jacket very easily. Okay. Um, well, so maybe the, we'll revisit this. I don't know. You want me to make it harder? <laughs> okay. What do you have in mind? No, I'll think of something. I'll just make it really. I'll just make it really hard, then you'll hate it. <laughs> no. That's true. No, I, 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 it's just, it's interesting. It's, it's cool that this stuff is so um, approachable now. You know, really the hardest thing is just um, packing enough power, you know, to carry this thing around. Yeah. And, you know, the RC hobby now, because um, of, you know, the big quadcopters and stuff, you can get these huge-ass batteries. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's all very accessible now. How, so how much current does it draw on average? You know, I forget. A lot. A lot. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Well, this is super cool, and uh, everyone should look forward to a very cool project coming from Phil this week. There is the trellis. Oons. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so coming soon to the Adafruit learning system. Okay. Okay. Oonsy. Tony Decola, how you doing? Check in Oonsy. with Tony. Tony D. Hey, yeah. Uh, so no flashy demo, unfortunately. I've uh, just been working on some stuff. Uh, this is the DS1307 real-time clock, kind of an old, oldie but a goodie uh, project. And it's a really nice little clock. You know, it has a battery, so it'll keep the time, and you can use it with an Arduino. I've cleaned up the Arduino library, so if you use it with Arduino, uh, definitely check it out. We merged in a few things. Uh, there's a nice change that uses the non-volatile -vol RAM on this device, so you get 56 bytes that's, you know, kind of like uh, an EEPROM or something that you can store some data in and it'll retain it as long as it has power. So that's kind of a handy thing to have. Uh, and then it also added in a, a merge that put the square wave output on this device so that you can control, it has a little pin that outputs um, a square wave at a certain frequency, like 32 uh, kilohertz or 8 kilohertz. So that can be kind of handy, like if you just need to blink something or maybe wake up a microcontroller every second. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, and the library uh, just fixed some small bugs and things and did some refactoring, so it's all goodness there. Uh, and the other thing was I also tested it with uh, the BeagleBone Black. Uh, so you can use this now, hook it up to the BeagleBone Black, and there are good instructions that work with uh, the Deb Debian uh, D distro, so you can use your real-time clock. And I think that the way that BeagleBone Black works is if you have Internet connectivity, it'll use that to set the clock, but if you don't have Internet connectivity, yeah. it's useful to have that so that you can keep the time. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, just been uh, working on that one, and then uh, next I'll probably start looking at some other sensors, like the uh, I think the BMP eighty five one eighty uh, humidity sensor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for all the folks out there who really like our Arduino libraries and wish that they worked on Raspberry Pi and uh, BeagleBone, you'll be able to soon thank Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's the plan. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Tony. Cool. Next up, Noah. Hey, Noah. How's it going? Can you hear me? Hey. Yep, you sound great. All right. Uh, about a month ago, I made this, but I haven't shown it because I've been doing other things. But this originally was a car. There were wheels on the bottom at one point, and it was glued together instead of rubber banded, but I ripped it apart to get the microcontroller out. It's using an Arduino Micro, and it's hooked up to the 2.2-inch TFT, and I've got it displaying an animation. It was a race car, 
and Ooh. it won second place for design. Sweet. Yep. So you had like custom uh, graphics on the display as it raced? Uh, well, I had to remove the battery while it raced because it was too um, heavy, unfortunately. But you could show it um, off and like get advertising dollars and then yep. advertise on the car. Get second place for design. <laughs> I've got nice. something else to show. I bought a pink eraser a while ago to do this, but I had just never gotten around to it. All my flash drives I've completely stripped the cases off of. Oh, that's so cute. That's cool. I stuffed it inside Aww. an eraser. Yeah, coming soon from ThinkGeek for probably 12 bucks. They're just going to... I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, tr it's funny because it's true. It's funny because it's true. Okay. I like uh, the eraser. Both projects, fantastic. Um, email support at adafruit.com. And you get two as seen on the show and tell stickers. Awesome. One for your car. And... One for the car and one for the eraser. What I like about the eraser, though, which I, which I really think it's kind of cute, is it's like, um, it's so totally, totally like covert. Yeah. Like if you want, like I know, I don't know if kids have diaries anymore that they type on, but if you want to hide some files, like who's going to think of looking in the eraser? Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's cool. You can keep it in your stuff and know. Yeah, like no, it's like, ah, oh, it's just some eraser and some pens and pencils. They'll ignore it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Super spy technology. All right. Next up, Will. Hey, Will. How's it going? Hey, Will. I'm at your mic and show us your project. Will. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. You sound great. Okay, so a while ago I made this DIY cell phone. Oh, cool. This is, um, project I found. It was in Make Magazine, and the guy put who invented it put up a lot of uh, documentation on it, so it's working right now. I'm going to try to do this backwards. Okay. Uh, so it's got just a regular number pad and arrow keys, basically. So That's I have, like... My contacts in here. Um, oops. And then I've been fiddling with the code a lot because it's all open source. And I added this piano mode in. So now these are all keys. So it, uh, it has this buzzer that it uses for doing um, the ringing. So. So it'll play tones um, without you having to like alt actually alter the code and re-upload it. Now I can do it on the fly to try to like compose my new ringtones. Okay, yeah, those are ringtones. This is cool. This is like um like 80s style. I like the red um LED display. Where'd you get that display from? Um, I think we just ordered out most of the parts off like DigiKey or Sparkfun or something like that. Um, very cool. All off those big, the big websites. I don't know. It's just some like dot matrix display. Yeah, it's super. It's super cute though because it's LED, so it's like really bright, but it's dot matrix. Yeah, you can also. You can change the brightness too. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent yeah. project. Well, of course, email support at datafruit.com, and you get an as seen on the show until sticker. I also like the idea that you know, like animated gifs are like popular now. Again. And now people are like, you know, that the phones that do so much and probably too much. Yeah. And they give back so little. Now yeah. you can, you know, make your own people phone. People want. People want to have a, a minimal phone. Yeah. It's so, kind of fun to have like a custom phone. You're like, hey, I built my phone. You know, what I really like about this one is that it's, like, really simple. It can't really do that much, and, like, it doesn't even save your texts yet. I'm working on that. But yeah. you can, like, I've, like, I can just mod it whenever I want. Yeah, whenever. if it doesn't save your text, you can call it, like, Snapchat text and sell it for $4 billion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up. I hope I pronounce this right. Dries? 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 Hello. You... Hi. Um... I made a, an EMF detector. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, neat. You need um, a DIY phone and, to test it with. <laughs> um, I've taken some pictures. But where, um, I can't find the, the oh, yeah, screen share. Yeah, they hi it's the green one, the second one down. And then you have to choose the window. Always yeah. a little tricky with Google Plus. Um, so um, I, I was looking for a way to visualize electric signals, and um, so your screen share isn't um, sharing yet. I don't know. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to. Think, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was looking for a way to visualize. Oh, here you go. Signals, um, and I am. Um, oh, I started taking pictures with a really long shutter delay mm -hmm. so that you can 
have small snaps of um, electric fields. And um, eventually, you combine the pictures, and then you have something like this, or like this. Hmm. This is with a, a multicolor LED. And these are solo panels. Uh, this is another solo setup. And this is our workspace. It's really beautiful photos. They have they have a lot of like uh, energy in them. It looks like it's lightning or yeah. electricity, which is kind of what you're detecting. Yes, that was uh, one of the the goals I tried to to have with the pictures that that you can see the fields and um, notice that there are actually fields around you, even though you can't see them or notice them. And yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well, you get an SE on the show until sticker. It does not emit any EMF, but you can put it on your detector. Not on purpose. It's a <laughs> it's a non-intentional admi emitting no, it's a non -intentional emitter. sticker. And uh, fantastic show and tell. Yeah. Everybody showed up. Fun projects. Yeah. And, like a nice a nice mix. Yeah. So uh, ask an engineer comes up next. We the do the tenets. show and tell yep. every single week. If you're watching this right now and it's recorded. Um, Seven thirty p.m. Seven, Eastern time every right. Wednesday. And every Wednesday on our Google Plus page plus.google.com forward slash plus. And if you look for the link and comment on the page in the post, and we add you to the show and tell sticker, and then you get a notification and a bunch of things happen in your Google Plus thing, and uh, you can join the show and tell. All participants okay. on the show and tell get an SEO on the show and tell sticker. I'm getting good at saying that fast now. Get less stickers. All right. So All right. thank you very much, Will, Tony, Phil, Noah, Pedro, and the, the Adabot army. <laughs> Noah. Andres, thank you so much. We'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer. Ten minutes? In five minutes. Five, ten minutes? Yeah. All right, bye-bye.